I'm going to make a few videos on how the TensorFlow example the Iris demo works. This is quite an exciting demo that has quite a lot of web application concepts but also has some relatively simple TensorFlow.js machine learning concepts as well. So let's just look at this demo and see how it works. Now this is the repository here. You can download this repository and go to this example and you can read the instructions here you, to create and build a project and run it. You just type yarn and then yarn watch. The actual data that's loaded into this example is based on the iris flower data set. This is four categories of the iris flowers that you can use to learn to distinguish what type of flower it actually is. So this is uh, based on some research that was done back in the day. So to run this example, we just yarn, run yarn watch and up fires the application. It takes a few seconds to build it. There we are. So when you first fire up the application, there is no locally saved model. But we can use, we can train a model from scratch using TensorFlow.js in the browser, or we can load the, the pre-trained model. For starters, I'll just show you the loading, loading the pre-trained model from one of uh, the servers, not actually local data. So we click this, um, and it will actually be used by these input parameters to predict what uh, class of flower it is. Now, if we try and predict the flower using when there's no, no trained model, we get an error here. So if we load this from the here, this loads a model into the TensorFlow.js, and that what it does is based on these parameters we get the predicted flower and these are the different classes and this is the probabilities of it fa uh, matching iris setosa i don't know what that is let's just google that so that's what that is cool so if we start changing these parameters we see that tensorflow.js changes the probabilities of the categorization so at some point the uh, category will switch from iris setosa to something else Right, so now we see the probabilities change. At some point, the classification will change. There we are. Now, now when you have these parameters, TensorFlow thinks that it's this model, or this flower. So let's go to Google that. We want to expand our knowledge of botany. So, Iris Verskiocolor. How beautiful is that? Okay. Now then. Let us now try something different. Let us refresh the browser and let's use TensorFlow.js to learn in the browser using machine learning how the model is. So what this is going to do is it's going to gradually use machine learning algorithm to get uh, trained data to match up reliably with the, the real data. So let's just see what this looks like. So here we go. You see the gradually the error rates going down and down and down. And at some point, when we reach a stabilization point, TensorFlow.js will say, "Yeah, this is good enough," or or maybe just a number of iterations. Um, we'll look at the code later. So, when we reach a desired level, we want to be able to check that our tests match with the the correct result here. And now the model is actually saved in the the current browser session here. And we can go and use that using the model. Now, another cool thing about this example is we can actually save our model into IndexedDB. So if we just open up the application tab here on the browser, we can now go into here and we have a database. So there's a, there's our the data for this thing. Now. I'm not sure if it's actually done anything yet. Um, let me just refresh the browser here to see if that's actually saved it. I might just have created a database on the application start. Let me just double check this. Oh, and I've got some breakpoints running, which I'll show you in the next video on how to con convert data to tensors. So, load hosted pre-trained model. Now, we didn't actually save one, so let me just see what happens. We click that. Okay, that's... That's the, the the hosted version. 
But this one's local this locally saved one is grayed out. So that means that even though we have the database initialized, we don't have any data in there. So what we do now is I'll just train from scratch again. And let's actually increase the amount of epochs. Epochs are complete training cycles. Uh, and let's see if we can, let's see how that looks. So we're gradually getting better and better and better. Okay, so we can actually save the model. And I want to see what this looks like when you save it into the IndexedDB. So we click Save Model Locally. And I guess it's going to put some stuff in here. Let's refresh this. Okay, there we go. So we have something in model store. And this is the, all the data is in here. Just because I'm curious, I just want to look in here. So it's saving something called model topology. And then it has some configuration for the, I guess the layers. And then this can be used to load into the, the model for TensorFlow.js. We can look at this stuff a bit later. I've just been a little bit nosy here. Quite exciting stuff. And then there's a table called model info store as well. Okay. That's cool. So I guess now let's refresh the page and load our saved model and see if that gives us predictions as well. So load, sa so load locally saved model and it loads the model, and then we get our predictions working straight away. You can also click this button here, which will delete the database. Now, if you don't, you can also do that with code. So you can just type index DB, delete database, tensorflow.js, and that should delete the, the database. Okay, folks, that's all I wanted to talk. Next video, we'll talk about how the tensors and iris data, well, that, sorry, the JSON um, data for the iris demo is loaded into TensorFlow. Thanks, and see you next time.